All right, here we go with defeating Adventism number 46. And yes, I realize these are now out of order. I've got three videos in works right now. Various stages of completion and incompletion. They're not done. They'll be issued by the end of this month, which is October 2021. So rather than go back and just tweak all those files and make all those changes, I just said, heck with it. I'm just going to leave them as is. I'm producing this one. I'm getting this out. I just, I got my Adventist Review Magazine yesterday. I made this um, I made these slides yesterday. I thought I'm getting this video done today. And there's an article in here about the Sabbath. Is it eternal? So what do we have here? We've got an article here by Ellen White. And it's like, what? Ellen White? I thought Ellen White was not so important to Adventist. And that, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. But here she is in your magazine in 2021, 100 years after, she, after her death. So what does she say about the the, the Sabbath in here, in this um, magazine of hers. She says, right. Having rested on the seventh day, he blessed and sanctified it. To an Adventist, God rest and sanctifying the Sabbath equals the Sabbath. Seventh day in an Adventist mind equals Sabbath. Therefore, seventh day is the Sabbath created at creation, right? The fourth commandment places its origin at creation. This is so flawed and so wrong. Uh, we are definitely going to talk about that. What else does she say? The Creator's rest day was hollowed by Adam and Eve. Okay, Adventist, here's a challenge for you. Show me which scripture verse that says Adam and Eve were one, given the Sabbath, and two, observed the Sabbath. Ellen White then goes on to say, and by men of God throughout the patriarchal ages. Now she says more things that can't be found in the Bible. Show me where Jacob observed the Sabbath. Show me where Noah observed the Sabbath. Show me where either one of them were given the Sabbath. You can't. It's not there. Let's address this whole seventh day thing on the next page. Here we have the creation account. This is just Genesis 1, 1 through 15, not all of it. But we're going to see a pattern here. And on the first day, when, when God called the light day and darkness night, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And then... God called the expanse when he created the heavens and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And then God brought forth vegetation and you see the pattern here? And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And this continues on if I was to show you later. You can read it for yourself in the Bible. And there was evening and morning the fourth day. Evening and morning the fifth day. The sixth day. And then we get to the seventh day and those words aren't here. There is no and there was evening and morning the seventh day. The seventh day is not finished yet, in essence, or the day itself. But this day is definitely different. That, which you saw on the previous page, is not here. So, the Hebrew word for Sabbath is not seventh day. What you see here in Genesis 2-2 and what Adventists think when they see seventh day, they think Sabbath. It's not Sabbath. There's the Hebrew word in front of you right there, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Sheblith. All right, you guys can correct me, but Yom, like Yom Kippur, Yom, day. It's these two words. It's two words. A Sabbath isn't two words, by the way. Sabbath is one word in Hebrew. And oh, by the way, the Hebrew word for Sabbath does not even occur in the entire book of Genesis. So another challenge for you, Adventist, show me in the book of Genesis where the Hebrew word Sabbath exists. I, I want to see that because you can't celebrate a Sabbath if the word doesn't exist. And the word does not exist here in Genesis 2, too. Seventh day is what you see here in the screen in the middle, and it is not the Sabbath. Look at these um, uh, verses here, Genesis 2, 1, 2, 3. Where is man even mentioned here? I'll wait. I should play the Jeopardy theme now. Dee, 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 dee. Because it's not. It doesn't even mention man. So where is man commanded to observe the Sabbath here? He's not. Because, one, the Sabbath doesn't even exist yet. It's not even here. It's not even in the book of Genesis. There is no scripture which states that Adam and Eve were given the Sabbath or observed the Sabbath. I'm going to address this concept of rest on the next page here. You know what, Seventh-day Adventists, because it says God rested. In the Adventist mind, God resting is like God observing the Sabbath. But you know, my God doesn't need to rest. 
your God, Seventh-day Adventist, obviously needs to rest because you always tell me he did and, did and does. But if you look up uh, Genesis and you look up rested, um, there are other words that can be translated and you don't have to use rested. You can use God ceased creating. God desisted from creation. That's why you see in the ISV translation I have here because on it God stopped working on everything he had been creating. See, it doesn't say God rested. But see, Adventists need the word rest because they associate rest with Sabbath because that's what you're supposed to do on a Sabbath. But you know what else you do when you do that, Adventist? You make God a law keeper. You make God resting on a Sabbath. My God doesn't need to rest. Look at Psalm 121.4. Look, it says, the one who is guarding Israel never sleeps nor takes naps. My God doesn't need to rest. Your God does, Seventh-day Adventist. You have a God that you've created who is a law maker and he has to keep his own laws. My God doesn't do that. My God is the law maker. He doesn't need to keep the laws. He is the maker and owner of the laws. That's why Adventists, we got different gods. Your God needs to rest. My God doesn't. Adventists, you confuse the law maker with human beings who are to be the law keepers. They're the ones that need to rest. God doesn't need to rest. Genesis 2-3 is an accurate translation because God stopped working on everything that he had been creating. And oh, by the way, if you want to challenge me on my use of the ISV, I've got quotes already waiting for you where the ISV has been used in Adventist literature in a favorable light. So Adventism already knows about the International Standard Version Bible. Honoring the Sabbath. What does Miss Ellen White say? She says, before they came to Sinai, they understood the Sabbath to be obligatory upon them. And then she goes, you can see here, after giving the manna, she's actually citing Exodus 16 here. Uh, then she goes on to say, when she's citing this uh, Exodus 16 event, and then, like, out of nowhere, she drops this sentence. Here's the conclusive evidence that Sabbath was instituted at creation. No, you're talking about Ellen White now. Okay, Ellen, I'm talking to you directly. Exodus 16 is about the manna falling from heaven. It has nothing to do with creation, but she drops this sentence in here like it does. Talk about a sentence that does not fit and does not follow the narrative. This one does not. It doesn't prove anything. It just proves the Sabbath was given. The Sabbath, the first occurrence of the Sabbath is in this event that Ellen White is citing in Exodus 16. The first occurrence of the Hebrew word for Sabbath is Exodus 16.23. Oops, I just gave my Adventist friends the answer because uh, they're not going to find Sabbath in Genesis, but they will find it here in Exodus 16.23 for the first time. Now, you know what Ellen is not telling you? She's not telling you the commands that came with that Sabbath. Read with me here. See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That's Exodus 16.23. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Re remain each of you in his place, and let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. Adventist, why do you break this every single Sabbath? You go out of your place and you go to church for hours. But yet, here's a Sabbath command here that says, don't leave your house. Stay put. Adventists break this every single Sabbath. Adventist. Open up your Bible to Exodus 16, and every time you go to church on a Sabbath, read this. You are, you are dishonoring that Sabbath which you say that you keep, which you don't. Last paragraph here is Ellen White stating the law is eternal. It's not only for his chosen people. Boy, is Ellen White wrong. Doesn't Ellen White know how to read the Bible? Look at Exodus 31, 12, the Lord told Moses. And then the rest of it is verse 16, where the Israelites, the nation of Israel, shall keep the Sabbath. To make the Sabbath observance. It was given to the nation of Israel. Yes, I know there's a couple occasions when some non-Israelis were accepted into uh, the nation of Israel. But the general call of Gentiles in general, worshiping God, that didn't happen until the New Testament. That's the mystery that was in Christ that the Apostle Paul talks about. Look what the Apostle Paul says here. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised Gentiles, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised Jew. See, the gospel didn't come. The message of 
God didn't come to the non-Jew until the Apostle Paul himself was called to be the Apostle to the Gentiles. So yeah, the law was for his chosen people. But when Christ died on the cross, the law was obsolete. Hebrews. Read Hebrews 8.12 and Hebrews 8.13, my Adventist friends. The law which is obsolete, which is fading away, which is gone, been replaced. That's why we moved from law to grace. You can't have both of them at the same time. Then Ellen says what? Not one jot or tittle shall pass from this law. You know, I agree. Not one jot or tittle did pass from the law. By the way, law here, look it up in the Hebrew, because I did. It's nomos, which means the which means the Mosaic Law. It's not the Ten Commandments. It's the entire Mosaic Law. You're not going to find... And the other word, by the way, for law used often in the New Testament is entole, which is another word for laws and commands that are not part of the Mosaic Law. There is not a third word used, uh, a single word, law, which is then defined as just the Ten Commandments. You only find that in Seventh-day Adventism. They, Seventh-day Adventism are guilty of eisegesis, reading into the scriptures that which is not present. Adventists need to learn exegesis, extracting from the scriptures the plain reading of the Bible itself. Then she goes on to say two institutions are founded in Eden and lost. It's the Sabbath and marriage. And then she goes on to say, who by precept or example lessens the obligation of the sacred institutions is an enemy of both God and man. If you don't keep the Sabbath, Ellen White just called you an enemy of God. How can you be a Christian and have salvation if you're an enemy of God? You can't. Ellen White has really just told us right here, keep the Sabbath or you lost your salvation. You know what? The Sabbath is not an eternal command, period. I want you to refute these three prophets for me, Adventists, and prove to me, show me where these three scripture verses are wrong. Number one, show me where Moses is wrong. What's Moses say? The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. Not with our forefathers did he make this covenant. Huh. This, this covenant, the Old Testament covenant was made with Moses and the nation of Israel. Nobody before him. The law is not eternal. How about this? The Apostle Paul. Now the promises were made to Abraham and his offspring. And keep reading. And then we get down to the law which came 430 years afterwards. The law came 430 years after Abraham's calling. In other words, it didn't exist during Abraham's time or before Abraham. The law is not eternal. Next, I want you to refute Nehemiah. When he talks about God coming down from Mount Sinai, and then what's he say about it? And you made known to them your holy Sabbath. Huh, if the law existed before that, why wouldn't Nehemiah tell us that? Because it didn't. Nehemiah knew when the law came into existence, and it came in existence at Mount Sinai. Adventism, Adventists that is, you are being taught incorrectly. You need to get out of this false church and stop reading this false prophet that we just read here in this article here, Ellen White. Ellen White's a false prophet and a false teacher.